Hey, what's going on, everyone? Zef and Moses here, and I am here today with Pablo, and Hello. we are going to be doing a behind-the-scenes tour of a live streaming and camera setup for Church Nativity in Timonium, Maryland. Awesome. So we're here right now. This is, is this, would you consider it the main sanctuary? Yeah, this is our, yeah, this is our sanctuary, our main place of worship. Uh, it can hold about 1,400 uh, capacity between downstairs and our balcony area. Awesome. And it was built in, opened up in 2017 when we uh, left our old church and went into this new place. And our, I'll show you in a little bit, but our old church now is our theater. Nice. So we're upstairs and their control room is in the back here. So I think we're going to start in yep. here and we'll come, come on there. in. So this is our main control room. Uh, we can, during uh, during mass and during production, we can, you know, dim, have dim lighting. So obviously it's easier to see and kind of hide in the control room from everybody that's in the sanctuary. So walk me down the line here. Sure. Kind of tell me like, let's maybe start at this end and we'll go that way. Yep. So what are we looking at? So down there, that laptop is we control our uh, our read uh, communication. So we can change uh, different um, listening, who can listen to what from some of our wireless devices and our wired devices. So it's just the laptop runs that software on it. Um, and then we have our shader position so a minister will sit here in the shade we have six man cameras in our sanctuary that are live and then a ptz and a, then a static wide camera so really eight cameras uh we have two panels of the camera controller black magic camera controller our third one is sitting here for christmas we just bought this one post christmas we'll have it and move it down into our theater for that area to live in. And for people who might not be as familiar with shading and what that entails, what is it that you guys are doing yep. when you're doing that? And I imagine we're getting like ISOs of each individual camera on these. Yeah, screens. so all of our cameras except our wide camera are, are shut off now, but you'll an operator will see uh, an ISO of the camera and then a scope next to it on each monitor. And they can, um, with the Blackmagic cameras, we have two lines that run to every camera uh, one can send a camera signal back to our booth into our rack system behind me. And then we use an aux out of our switcher to send the signals back to the cameras so that we can remotely shade, uh, color correct, um, iris, things like that uh, for each camera individually. And we can also save presets. So we'll have someone come in on a new, new series, new lighting design. They'll come in and pre-program presets that help the uh the operators out so that they can quickly uh, just kind of walk in and walk recall. in and kind of okay for that song we have preset one on that camera two for this camera and so forth very cool. so christmas we're going to have up to 20 cameras Ooh. so uh i'm added this the, this uh, other camera controller so that um, it'll help the person out awesome uh, and each side i don't know if you're familiar but there is an a and b side so there's four there's actually eight cameras you can control um, at each time. So we can go between bank A and bank B. So technically we could do 16 cameras between two uh, panels. Good deal. Uh, we, we also just have the um, ATEM software controller here that they can, when he's programming shots, he can do it with the laptop, but that's not our main Some uh, fine software Some fine-tuning or additional yeah. adjustments to it as you go. Yep. This next position, uh, I'm in a lot on the weekend. And we have, it's basically, we call it our producer position. So we can talk through the real system, intercom system that almost anybody in the building, different positions, different cameras, um, audio, lighting, even our on-air talent. We can talk to them in their ears with IFB. And we kind of just oversee the director, um, help them out when, you know, sometimes as a director, you get struggled in the mass, what part of mass or what's coming next. Or we'll talk to the camera operators, check your focus, um, you know, you can move your shot to a different different spot, kind of just as a, a helping tool for the producer. I mean, excuse me, for the director. Uh, we use Script Viewer. So Script Viewer talks um, to Planning Center. Uh, most churches might be familiar that are watching with Planning Center. We use um, Script Viewer that talks to Planning Center, and we program just what's going on, the different parts of the mass songs and then I can program what cameras for the directors to take um, our iMag and our broadcast director I can tell them if they're in sync if they're not in sync I can add a script like all the different readings 
So we'll just follow along. We just recently did this a few months ago. Some of the positions have this on there. And then we can also, which I'll show you in a second, we can also see, doesn't want to work right now. That's plain and center. And then there we go. We have a pro video server, so we can view that um, from another location. Very cool. So we've got a multi-viewer over here. Multi-viewer. So we have um, our main director for IMAG director that we call this position. So they're directing everything that goes on in the sanctuary. Um, we have, I'll show you in a minute, a broadcast director as well. They're controlling ME2. IMAG is controlling ME1. So we have a, an older uh, ME2 uh, broadcast panel um, from Blackmagic. Um, and... They're different multi-viewers. Uh, right now, I have this set up for Christmas. Uh, typically, we would also have a, I would have a different setup where we could see um, ME2 program preview from here as the producer, so we can keep an eye on that, that feed as well. Um, so I just currently changed the layout for prepping for Christmas. Makes sense. And they also have another script viewer on an iPad in front of them. And then what do we have down here below it? Is that like a little macro keypad of some sort? So this little keypad uh, talked via USB to a laptop at the end, which is what we call our scripture screen. So um, our pastor, during his uh, message, will walk over to a touch screen in the sanctuary and go to different like lyrics uh, or different parts of uh, Bible verses. Um, and we run that off of here. So this position can basically manually override um, the touch screen if they need to, or if there's a clear next, instead of the, you know, the pastor walking and swiping to a clear, we can just do it ahead of time as he walks back to the podium. Um, we also have a stream deck that the producer can control our Pro Presenter 7. It's uh, not on right now. Nice little shortcut, easy way to access some things. Yep. So we've got an iMac down here. What's coming up on the displays? Is that like program? Yeah, so we we just, um, well, we run, this is our graphics station, graphics and video playback. Uh, we were doing everything through ProPresenter 7 up until uh, about July. Um, and we decided to, um, after some research, pull all our videos off of ProPresenter 7 and move them to Pro Video Server. Uh, still made by Renewed Vision, um, just a different program. And we purchased three channels of output. So our graphics operator, we, you know, ahead of time during the week, we will load all the graphics on a playlist. So we go for our, like, we go live five minutes before mass. Um, so we have graphics for that. And then we have all our lower third lyrics for the songs. And we have different looks that will sometimes change the confidence monitor. Um, we have two different keys. So we have a look for a broadcast key and a look for an IMAG key. So it's a little smaller lower thirds for the lyrics when we're watching on broadcast um, and all by one, one slide that has different looks. And we have outputs of the iMac through DeckLink Duo. So we have two of them. Um, so we have eight channels um, output of the iMac Two channels are for a broadcast key and two channels are for IMAG key, but then we have uh, two outputs of graphics one, graphics two, confidence monitor output and such. So what this person is doing now, since July, since we took all our videos off, uh, they're running Pro Video Server, which is behind them actually, off of a Mac mini. And we have our three channels. And the way we've done it is we have our video one, which is basically keyed videos how I set it up. So any video that's keyed over, so our open, we have the overlay. key, yeah, we have the key already on, they play it, it keys over whatever is uh, going on. And then our video two is our full screen videos, we've calling it. So we have our message bumpers, our kids bumper. Uh, sometimes we'll play different other videos during mass, they'll run off of video two. And video three is our background channel. So we have backgrounds for the creed, the gospel, different parts of the mass where we overlay uh, text on top of that channel. So that's how I kind of like designated the three channels. 
So this operator uses a stream deck to talk to the computer behind them, and they can, I have it programmed where they can hot punch different buttons. So if I have more videos, I'll just add the different buttons for the other videos. So we have a bumper video, we have time travelers, and then they can play it. So this is just viewing monitors for video one, video two, video three. And then since they see IMAG so close, and typically broadcast program is that far away, I ran a broadcast feed so they can make sure broadcast or IMAG are off a of video before they uh, they queue the wrong video up by, by chance or still on the air. Now, obviously, all this stuff is kind of built into these rack mounts and things. You can't just get back there, unscrew an SDI cable, pop it in somewhere else. Yep. What are you guys doing to kind of route all that stuff? Like, let's say tomorrow you're like, you know what? I don't really want this to go to this screen. I want to change what's going there. Yeah, so it's funny you mentioned this, these rack mounts. They actually were just installed. Uh, might have been summertime. So you really did have to get in there so, and run all the well, well, we had um, different... Um, we had somebody built little uh, shelving units that our, our multi-view sat on. So, and we didn't even have these actually because we just installed it in July. But we had like makeshift racks that were removable. Um, and so then the, the multi-view sat a little bit lower, but we wanted to make it look a little bit more uh, appearance, uh, a little bit better and easier to get to things as far as like, Instead of uh, the, the comms sitting lower, sitting up a little bit higher, um, a little bit better viewing for everything. Um, so, yes, if we had to change something, we would have to like physically change the SDI input and reach back there. But we do have a rack behind you with our switcher and everything. Um, and just to quickly mention, um, the producer, we also have two uh, record decks um, that we record multi-view. I forgot to mention earlier. We record program, and then we record a multi-view with comms channel, split audio. So one channel is comms, and one channel is program air, and then... So you really have like a behind-the-scenes recording of yeah, every, everything. Yeah, every weekend we do that, and um, I upload it to Vimeo, send it to the directors, use it as training tools, nice. and then also, you know, we can go back and look to see what worked, what didn't work, things like that. Um, so we have two panels. This is mostly our Crestron. We use Crestron to... Um, feed different um, audio video to different venues, uh, different spots in our building. And we have some touch panels throughout the building that feeds that. And then we have some of our amps and processors for sound. We have ethernet rack, uh, ethernet patch panel um, that we can feed either um, you know, out to the world or we can patch different um, spots throughout the building if we needed to patch video through ethernet or even audio through ethernet. Bunch of SDIs. And so this is where comes our our input and outputs. So all of our video drops. We have several video drops throughout the building, um, uh, not just in our sanctuary. So all those drops will come up to a patch bay in the back, and then the return feed goes back to the video drop. So we have can't see it, but on the very bottom we have SDI distribution, which they talk to the aux we set, we have aux 3 of our switcher being sent to there and then all those outputs distributed back into the patch bay and then from the patch bay to the video drops to get that return signal for tally that also uh works with that not just camera control but they get all the camera operators get tally and then we can also patch different spots in the building we have some fiber every drop has almost every drop has sdi and fiber and uh, XLR, and we have uh, some more Ethernet, um, and then we have two-way radios that we can program to talk to some of the sacristans or the mass assist people, and then we can also um, have an emergency channel if we need to. Um, you know, things, things arise, and we can hear if there's any any problems throughout the building. Towards the bottom, very bottom, we have our Resi encoder, so we use a Resi Prism encoder. And we switched to that probably about a year and a half, almost probably about two years ago um, from Wirecast. And um, we've been very happy with it. Um, we've virtually had no issues with Resi um, since we switched over. Very cool. And then come around here. We have this rack panel. 
that one of the upgrades uh, I've done recently in the past year or so, um, rack mounted some of our, we have a Blackmagic Multiview, our Video Hub, and then we have a Blackmagic Constellation 8K. So that's kind of the meat of everything. Everything's feeding into that. That's that's your switcher that's running the show. Yes, majority of all the cameras will go uh, either into the multi-view or the smart hub and then into the AK. Some of them go directly into the AK, uh, but it gives us, uh, as your viewers probably know, um, what is it, 40 inputs and 24 outputs. Um, yeah, I can see all your SDI cables running through the back there. Yes. <laughs> So, um, and then we have uh, 24 aux outs or 24 outputs. They don't have to be, um, so some of them we have sending to program different spots in the building. Uh, some of them we have outputs being sent to some um, converters on the top of the rack here um, that will feed multi-views throughout the different building. So some of our other rooms have multi-views. So we go to a converter from SDI over to ethernet and patch it through ethernet. Um, into the different rooms. Um, we also have a, this hooked up to our AK. It's, we call it our Zoom computer. Uh, we don't really use it for Zoom uh, anymore, uh, but it does feed our switcher. So we'll be using that actually for Christmas for one of our uh, items that we have going on at Christmas time. So it's always good to have that. So uh, just off the control room here, it looks like we've got a, a second room here. Tell me a little bit about what's happening over this way. Yeah, so we have uh, our broadcast director is positioned here. So uh, unlike the IMAG director, obviously this one directs our broadcast feed, about 85, 90% is the same, the sanctuary that is online. There's different parts of our mass that are different. For instance, our five before, the five minutes that we uh, go on before mass starts is all done through here. And then sometimes we get out of sync between IMAG and broadcast. Um, so when they are in sync, the director here does have an IMAG sync button. And if they go to that, whatever is on IMAG will be on broadcast. And then they can get out of sync by matching what they have to get out of sync and then cut to a different camera themselves. Um, we have a Blackmagic 1ME uh, advanced panel here. Uh, they're basically just running off of ME2 and switching on ME2. So this is printing. still coming out of the 8K. All out of the 8K. They're touching in there. They're just running a different ME. For they're just running a different screen. ME. So we have uh, our output of ME going to the resi. Or excuse me, output of ME2 going to our resi uh, for our broadcast. And then output of ME1 is feeding our sanctuary. And then over here, they can do... And then this the director also um, controls our Panasonic PTZ camera. I'll put a program in preview for you. We have made some preset spots where basically they're like the starting points to then control. They can pan, obviously, tilt, zoom. Uh, it's a really nice controller that we've upgraded when we got the, the Panasonic camera. Um, and we just made different touch points to make it a little bit easier starting points for them. Obviously, they can override anything they, they need to. Um, they can control the speed. We do have some tracing memory um, that built in there where only issue with that is it takes a couple more steps to get to it out of this screen. So it's not perfectly user friendly, but we do have some tracing memory where it just auto pans back and forth uh, that we have set to. Um, and uh, we can control more PTZ cameras, but currently we just have one in our sanctuary. Um, they also have a script viewer. This is where our main uh, laptop that's talking to the AK where we run our software, uh, ATEM software control off of this laptop. Um, and we also have a web-based, we can also override the PTZ camera through a web page. Um, behind is just kind of, this is temporary. I just actually set this up since we're in Christmas mode. We're getting ready to deploy more cameras for Christmas. So I just made up a little workshop area for me to um, get all the cameras ready to go. Well, this is our old sanctuary camera. We used to have a bird dog in the sanctuary. Um, so now it's our spare PTZ camera. Christmas time, we'll have this outside for little bump shots. Um, we have our spare micro studio. We just purchased this Black Magic um, Pocket 6K G2. So it's nice. It has the tilting screen. 
the difference between this and the pro of this is that the pro has the built-in NV filters, which in the sanctuary we really don't need. Um, and then how are those cameras typically getting back to your switcher are you using wireless or they might take it to a drop in the building? So what we'll do, we don't have the, we do have a wireless transmitter and receiver. Uh, unfortunately, it does not send back the camera, the tally or camera control. So we use that just for other uh, cameras about the building when we have a drop that's hard to get to where we don't need the remote camera shading. Um, but we have bi-directional converters. So we will do HDMI out into HDMI in and then into our video drop, SDI in, SDI out. And it does send the signal back and forth, sends a signal to the booth. And then the booth sends a signal back to the pocket 6K for tally. So the operator will see on air or they'll see preview on their screen and um, we can remotely shade it with our camera panels. Same with the micro studio. They have two mini SDIs that go in and out to regular SDI that are in the video drops. So for Christmas, we were getting, we're renting a few more of these. We've been really happy with it so far. Um, and then uh, we'll have cameras in different locations throughout the building. Uh, back in here, we have our broadcast audio booth. <clears throat> so. Our front of house audio is different than our broadcast since it's a different mix. You know, you mix to the room downstairs in our front of house. Here they're mixing for online. So they can, through a Dante network, they can pretty much get any microphone that the board downstairs has and they can call it up through a Dante network. So we're just outside of the sanctuary. We're in our cry loft area. Um, so if we have kids, you know, that are crying, little babies, um, so that, um, the parents can get away and feel like they're not being, you know, their child's not being distracted or anything. They can come up here. We have windows that they can see into the sanctuary. We have a feed of the, the uh, of our sanctuary feed or IMAG feed. But just wanted to show you while we were up here, a little place easy to show you some of our video drops. So these are what they all, for the most part, will look like. Um, we have them throughout the building. Um, so we have fiber, SDI, XLR, and some power in each of these drops. Um, I don't know offhand how many we have, but we have them quite, quite a few in different areas. Um, so currently what we have here, just for Christmas time, we have our wireless um, Teradek, wireless transmitter and receiver. So as you turn around, we have one of our old uh, studio 4Ks, I think is what they're called. Um, pointing down to our cafe that is set up and decorated for Christmas. So before mass or after mass, we might take a shot from this camera just because we have trees that are lit up um, during this time of the year and we have hanging lights down in our front window. So just to make it easy, I just hooked up the wireless transmitter so I didn't have to run SDI all the way across and have you know, less of a tripping hazard this time of the year. And then over the balcony, you'll see our big cafe where before or after mass, people can come get coffee, get pizza on Saturdays. They can get donuts and tea and all sorts of things on the weekend. So we're now downstairs. We're actually by the front entrance to the building, right? Yep. This is our main entrance for our uh, for the sanctuary and for leads to our concourse area. So as you see, it's a pretty big, vast area where... People can walk down to our cafe area. They can walk down to the kids' wing, um, different parts of the building. And then obviously all the different entrances to our, to our sanctuary. Obviously, we're set up for Christmas time. Um, while we're down here, I'll show you this little area. We call it our live cam area. Um, sometimes in the past, it's been mobile. We'll take it to the different drops. It's where we go live five before mass. So we have two on your talent. We have different spike marks where they stand all the various lights. We have a micro studio camera uh, on there and we with a uh, remote um, hand tilt zoom uh, rig on there that through Ethernet we can up in that broadcast booth. That was another controller uh, I didn't show you guys earlier, but they can pan tilt on that. Uh, and then we can remote zoom from the ATEM on that lens. Nice. Uh, they get a broadcast feed so they can see what's on the air. 
We have a little prompter system kind of set up for them as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we go live five minutes before mass. We've been here for a while in this spot. Uh, maybe post Christmas, we'll change it to a different spot. Uh, that's the beauty about having all these video drops. Uh, every season we used to change it, change it up a little bit and make it a little different. So, and you here, mentioned to me, like at one point you guys went live 10 minutes before mass and you changed it to five minutes. What was kind of the decision there? And uh, for anyone else watching or just thinking like, why, why go live before the scheduled time? Like what's the benefit of that? Or, or what yeah. are you, who are you doing that for? Yeah. So, you know, we have, even before COVID, we had a pretty big online audience. During COVID, our online audience, like every, like a lot of churches and all, it just boomed. Um, and we've had, that has continued on with COVID um, the way it is now. And we still have a huge online audience, online presence. We have viewers from not just here in Maryland, across the United States and in different countries and continents sometimes. So they're watching all over. So it kind of brings them closer to the church. Um, we give them information uh, during that time of different events that they can either do online or in person if they're close by. Uh, we give them um, valuable tools that they can use um, from their own home uh, or wherever they're watching from. Uh, we used to do, I think it was, um, I wasn't here before COVID. I believe they were used to be five minutes um, and then they went to 10 minutes during COVID because there was a lot of information to give during that time. Um, and then we've noticed that um, two two things. One, it's a little bit hard to fill 10 minutes. It's about five minutes. <laughs> um, and it does seem to get, you know, um, it does seem to be a little, it was it seemed to be a little bit too long. So we just brought it back down to five minutes. We also, for a while there, would stream, not stream, but we would air those five minutes or those 10 minutes in the sanctuary as well. Um, we got away from that so that it's more of just a, a time to reflect in the sanctuary and the five minutes are just online. Um, so yeah, just a valuable tool to give um, people watching different information, you know, websites they can go to, our, our website, different parts of our website they can go to and upcoming get- Upcoming events. Upcoming events or resources for, you know, grief chat, things like that. And we have, our church has tons of different ministries and each ministry has so many valuable tools. Should we head on in? Yep, head on in. Let's our do sanctuary. it, show me the way. Yep. So I think I mentioned we can hold about 1,400, I mentioned before, in our main sanctuary. So these are our two main entrances that lead to the center of our sanctuary. This is this is built in 2017. Um, we can show you the theater later on, which was our old sanctuary. But um, we have two cameras, two Ursa broadcast cameras that are stationary in the back. Right there. And what kind of lenses are we running on these? These are like servo lenses. So those can... are servo lenses. The exact ones. I got a little cheat sheet here because <laughs> I got so many. We got five micro studio cameras on top of everything else. It's all good. We'll walk up and check yeah, out one of so... these. There's like a little stool there for the operator to hang out. Yeah. And then we also have, you know, uh, hardwired uh, comms for these positions as well. So these are the Fuji non lenses. Um, they're eight and a half to 170. Very nice. They have a 2x function, but we don't use, we don't go into 2x. So we've got one here, and then there's one on that side right in front of the booth. Yep. So we call it camera one, camera two. Uh, the Our front of house booth has our, our audio console. So we use DLive audio console. And then DLive S7000. And then here we have um, our lighting console. It's not currently on, but if... Uh, you can imagine uh, what we can do is here, we can control all our house lights. And then we have, if you walk by and you look, we have uh, lights on our truss, lights on uh, up top, and we have all kind of lighting design for our you know, contemporary music. We basically, we play all contemporary music here and uh, with our house band. And we have lighting uh, programs that go with the music. Very cool. And then I see we've got two projectors here going to the screens. Yep. So that feeds our iMag. I'm hoping my next change might be uh, LED walls for in here, uh, like we did in our theater. So our iMag feed just feeds both of them, uh, Panasonic projectors. And then a couple cameras up front there. Tell me a little bit about those. Sure. Those are, uh, they used to be our broadcast, and we moved those to their theater when we upgraded our theater. 
and we purchased Ur Ursa, uh, what is it, Mini Pro G2. <laughs> I think that's what they're called now. Um, yeah, 4.6K G2s. And those have Canon lenses on them. Um, and those are on dollies. And when you guys are streaming, are you streaming in 4K or just 1080? What's just 1080. Like so we have the 8K switcher, and everything going out is 1080. Okay, so see, we've got them on some dolly wheels there. Yep. And we've then got about 30 got foot drop. FBI, and our video drops on each side. 40, 40 feet of cable? Is that what uh, no, uh, these are about 30 feet, I believe. Okay. Well, that gives you a nice amount of room so that they can kind of wheel yeah, it across get, front of the stage. Get all and... the way about out. Almost the center. Nice. The other, we have a little bit longer cable on our what we call a camera three, so they can get all the way to the center on that one. And then um, from this direction, if you're looking back, I know we've got a confidence monitor that's up there. Yep. And what is that usually displaying, and and who's the person yep. that's going to be looking at that? So we have a pretty big band that plays on um, during our masses. So we have uh, currently three lead singers, and we have two guitars, bass player drums, keys, percussion. Um, so they are using that confidence monitor through the Pro Presenter 7 is feeding that for lyrics. So before mass, they'll see a countdown to mass. And then as mass starts, it changes to uh, a lyrics so they can see what lyric they're on and then the upcoming lyric. And just below um, that's the PTZ camera that, that we saw the controls for upstairs. Yep. And the confidence monitor, we can also feed full screen images, the output of like if they're talking about something specifically during mass, we can send uh, a picture up there so they know, oh, the picture's up there. The picture must be on the screen so they don't have to turn around and look at the what's feeding on the screens. Um, and then we have um, all the little lighting trusses like I mentioned, the rig up top with all the lights. We have different arrays, two speaker arrays up top. And you can also, if you looked above the conference monitor, that's the production booth that we were just in a little while ago. Very nice. And then further up on here, we have also then two handheld cameras. They're currently tucked away. So it's our cameras five and six that we call them. And we rigged up a micro studio, 4K camera on a little rig. They're not wireless, but they go handheld and they can reach uh, about 25 feet of cable on them. So we you can get maybe a third of the way across, yeah. halfway across. Yeah, they basically, that camera basically is in charge of the drum, uh, drums and the synth. And then we have another camera that's basically keys and gets up, up front for like electric guitar. Anything else we might have missed in here? Any other gear? I think we kind of covered I think we everything. we covered a huh? lot of it, yeah. I mean, we have several lenses on, on the different cameras and um, I can uh, provide you a list of all the gear we have so you can list it to all our viewers. Should we uh, hop on over to the theater and maybe yeah. give just a little sneak peek? I know it's not a major part of the live stream, but you guys have a gorgeous yes. setup in there too. And... Yeah, so we use that during mass, we use that for uh, kids programming. So during the Liturgy of the Word, the kids, will, all the younger kids will go out and they'll hear Bible stories in there and with um, uh, great kids programming that we have here at Nativity. Um, and then we also have kids programming that are um, different age groups all throughout the building too. Then go take a look. All right, so now we are in the theater room. Yep. Tell me a little bit about what this room is used for and then we'll go over a little bit of kind of the behind the scenes setup that we're seeing over here. Yeah, so uh, this was our old sanctuary, as I stated before. Uh, now we have it as our theater. We last, about a year ago, um, debuted the remodeled room. Uh, so all the seats are out. We have three LED walls that we installed, one 20 by 30 LED wall, and I believe it's 2.9 megapixel. Um, and the side ones are just about true 16 by 9, 3.9. Um, those are flush mounted with the wall. The 20 by 30 does stick out on trusses. So it would have been a nice upgrade. Upgraded the staging, all new lights. Uh, and then we we had a, about half of this was our old tech booth um, when we were in the sanctuary here and we've expanded it, kind of doubled inside. So we kind of can go down the line from 
left to right, we have an audio console. Um, we have our lighting console. Um, currently, we, we usually use this hedgehog, uh, but we're Christmas time. We're temporarily using this one, a little bit more lighting design for a Christmas show. Pro presenter, just like we have upstairs with um, two uh, deck link duos feeding multiple signals to our switcher. So deck links are just kind of hiding back here behind the iMac. Yep. And then we have, just like we did upstairs, a 1ME uh, advanced panel um, that we can control. Obviously switch between two MEs. The way I have it built is one of the MEs um, feeds our center LED wall output, and the other ME is the sides. So ME1 are our side LEDs, ME2 feeds the center. The theory of that is ME1 would be fed out to uh, air if we ever go live. We do have a little mini resi encoder in our video rack. Um, so we can stream from this room and we've done it a few times. So if we ever stream, our side ones would basically be program of what's going out on the air. We can feed cameras out to that one so that we can, in the center, we're not getting feedback with the camera in the center LED wall. And what switcher are you guys using for this and where's it tucked away? Yep, so it's tucked in here. It's a little uh, ATEM 2ME Production Studio 4K. This actually used to be the, the switcher that was upstairs. Um, and then we run our software panel on the laptop underneath there. And then in the back, we have you know all our video connections, uh, different cameras that run to it. It's probably a little dark to see it all. Um, and then we have a little audio rack on this side. So this room primarily is used for... Um, during mass, it's used for our kids programming. We call it time travelers. So at the start of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, they'll send kids out um, to go out here and they do kids programming um, that has to do about, you know, the Bible stories of the, of the week. And they play games, have lights, sound, music. It's a whole interactive programming for the kids during mass. Uh, when we're not in mass, We'll use this for different events, different rallies, Christmas rally, Summerfest rally. We'll invite people to come in. We have our band play, um, light, sound, music, uh, kind of big celebration room. Uh, we use it for conferences. We've used it this past year. We had a several conferences come in here and use the space for it. So it's a good overflow also seating for big uh, times like, like Christmas. We will have seats all throughout here um, for overflow viewing of mass. So Christmas time, we'll have our sanctuary, we'll have our theater, and then we will have what we're calling a winter garden for another viewing area for people because obviously Christmas time, a lot more people come into our church. So we need to have the extra seating for them. Cameras. Yep, so these were our Ursa broadcast cameras that were on the dollies in the sanctuary. We upgraded those, as I said before, so we moved them out to here. So we have cameras one and two. I also do have, I don't have cameras hooked up to them, but I do have cable runs that run to either side of the stage, end of the stage for like cameras three and four. So, could hook in. so when we have events, I can hook those cameras up and we can have multiple cameras, not just two in this room. We've gone up to like five at one time from this room. Um, and then we get closer, whole new lighting grid. And if you spin around, you can see it's off now, but we do have uh, a confidence monitor in here as well, just like we did in the old right above the cameras in the old sanctuary. And I noticed uh, there's some atmosphere going on in here. Yeah, a little haze machine. So we are about haze here too. So we have we do have a haze machine. Uh, I did not show it to you in the sanctuary, but we do have one in our sanctuary as, as well, and we have a different one in here. Uh, so we're just doing prepping for Christmas and. Um, testing different lighting design that, you know, works with our haze machine uh, that's back behind the LED wall. Very nifty. Yeah. See our lighting we, grid up there. A lot of options for control and different looks for different shows. Yeah, our old sanctuary, when this was a sanctuary, our old altar was kind of tucked in that corner and uh, it was concrete and we got rid of it all and built this stage and we can add step pieces different depending on the venue we can add more stage pieces if we need to and then just outside these doors is our kids area and offices so like i said we had different kids programming for different age groups so we have a our old building uh part of our old building a different a hallway for a kids wing and kids can go down there and 
We even have a nursery during Mass. Uh, parents can take their kids during, during Mass and have their kids in the nursery. We have a, another cafe, pavilion area, for like different hospitality suites too. Very, very cool. Yeah. Well, Pablo, this has been an, an awesome uh, tour of the entire place. We really got to see. Thank you. I probably missed something. That's okay. Well, <laughs> well, we'll find out in the comments, right? Someone's yeah. going to leave a comment. Let us know if we exactly. missed something. If you I will any let questions. you know. That gear list that he's got there is a little cheat sheet if you need us to go back to it and, and tell yeah. you anything about it. Uh, yeah. Let's say someone wants to check out your live streams or, or learn more about you guys. Where's the best place to uh, to check it out and to find out more? Yeah, so our website is uh, churchnativity.com, and we have uh, videos on there that you can watch all about our live streaming. And you can also go to our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube slash Church Nativity, and you can find us on there. Very cool. Well, thanks again for uh, giving me the tour and appreciate you taking some time out of your day. It's great. I'd love to have you back anytime.